This isn't what, this isn't why, this is how. This is how. Uh, This is tough because it's motivated by acceptance. And you have to now start acknowledging their own personal journey, right? The coaching years are marked by your child's own growing independence, uh, where they're starting to make their own friends. Um, They're starting to select their own music. Uh, They're engaging in their own activities. Now, here's what's tough for parents. You don't get to play this game for them. You're the coach in this game. You don't get to play. You have to coach. You have to coach them to help them as they're navigating this phase. So here's what's paramount. Effective communication. But here's what's amazing. Now, it's been a long time since I was a youth pastor, right? Uh, So Michael would tell you. Here's what happens when you hit ages 12 to 18. The communication stops. They need you to communicate with them more now than ever. Here's the problem. Just like with you and your spouse, you have to find the right time, the best time to communicate. Right? It's probably ugh, not going to be your best time. you got to find their best time. But communication becomes paramount in the coaching years. Engaging in open and even non-judgmental conversation, meaning this, you're not just there to give an answer. You're there to coach them, all right, to help them to find. So you're fostering an environment where your child feels comfortable uh, sharing their thoughts and their experiences with you. By the way, if you have not done so already at this stage, it, it, it is so important that you're asking the four H questions, okay? I would tell you, start this a lot earlier, but if you have not started it, it's not too late to start it. We ask every married couple, like sometime throughout the day, to ask these questions to each other, but here's what I would ask you. Where do you want your kids to go for answers? Do you want them to go to YouTube, to Google, to their friends, or to you? Uh, every parent I've ever asked that to has said, oh, I would like them to come to me. Well, if you're not setting a time now that they can come to you with their questions, when is that going to happen when they're in the coaching years? It's going to be tough. That doesn't mean you can't do it, okay? But you're going to have to start doing it now. And it may look something like this. Hey, I need to apologize to you. You know, there, I, I should have continued the communication process with you, but for some reason... I don't know. I I just thought maybe I I wasn't uh, uh, who you needed to go to. And and so I'm going to start asking you some questions every day. What are those four questions? Here they are. How is everything in your head? This is the intellectual question. Is there anything going on in the world that they have questions about, right? Now, if they have questions about the debate on Wednesday, I don't know who can answer those. Uh, But if they have questions about anything, this is intellectually. And here's what you have to do. You can't be sarcastic during that, and you can't put them down for whatever the question may be. So don't go, oh my gosh, you don't know the answer to that? Well, if you do that, guess what? They're not coming back to you the next time. All right. So whatever question they ask, you have to be serious. Number two, how is everything in your heart? This is the emotional question. Every time I do premarital or marital counseling, every time, the lady always says, he doesn't share his emotions with me. Okay, well, let's ask a question where he's going to be forced to share his emotions with you, right? Uh, so what is that? How is everything in your heart? Meaning, how are you feeling about this, okay? Question number three is this. How is everything in our home? And this is a great time. Maybe, it, you know what? It seems like recently um, I'm doing a lot more of the household responsibilities than you are. Well, I'm not sure what, how, like, can we talk about? Hey, you know what? Seems like it's been a, we haven't even talked about what we're going to do, you know, in the summer or uh, during Christmas break. Like, that's a good time for you to start planning things in your home, all right? And then the last question. I added this within the last couple of years, really post-COVID. How is your health? Physically, how are you doing, all right? But also spiritually, how are you doing? 
Okay, so I would say this, if you're married, like these are questions you should ask, but for those of you who have kids, these are questions that you should be asking them. Uh, now let me tell you, I have all boys, so let me tell you how this goes. Good, 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 good. <laughs> That's it. But guess what? Keep asking. Keep asking. Keep asking. Um, we were on uh, Beach Week two years ago. And uh, Sharon and I, and, and Zeke was out by the beach, and uh, Zeke said, hey, Dad, can we walk down the beach? He's never in his life asked if we could go walking down the beach, right? I'm like, sure. And so we go walking down the beach, and, and all of a sudden he says, can you ask the questions? I'm like, what are you talking about? You know the questions. Can you ask? I can ask them to you, but could you ask the questions? I said, sure. How's everything in your head? Good. I'm not sure what we're doing. Uh, how's everything in your heart? Good. I'm like, again, not positive. Now, I'm not saying it out loud, but inside I'm going, I'm not sure what we're doing right now. And then I say, how's everything in our home? And he stops. And he goes, I know sometimes you get upset with me that I don't like going out, that I just like staying home. But can I just tell you, our home is the safest place in the world, and I just like being safe. And he's like, okay, we can go now. And it was over, right? <laughs> Now, I understand through others that a lot of times, for those of you who are, are raising young ladies, you get a lot more of that. I just want to make sure that parents of sons know you may just get good, 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 good. Keep going at it, all right? Keep asking. So in this phase, uh, you are the coach. So you're coaching more than you're correcting like you did in the first two stages, Right? Like, you want to coach them through the decisions. You become the voice described by God in Isaiah 30, verse 21. Now, we want that to be the spirit, but we also want it to be your voice. Listen to Isaiah 30, verse 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, our ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Now, of course, we want the spirit living inside of them to do that. But mom and dad, you always want to make sure your voice is there. That even when they're not with you, because remember, you're coaching. That's why it's important. you got to transition. You can't live this for them, right? Because if you're not there to make every decision, guess what? More than likely, then they're going to make a bad decision because they, they don't know what that looks like. You've never, give, you've never coached them in that opportunity. So you want to coach them. Uh, I'm going to tell you, for those of you in this stage, uh, it's a really wise thing for you to do, a smart idea, that you would embrace an outside voice during this time. Another reliable voice that's not yours, that's not a parent, that has the same biblical worldview that you do, and that they can reinforce the values and the morals that both you and the church are trying to impact. Uh, for my two oldest boys, this is what it looked like. I would text them a verse every day. Text them a verse every day. I didn't get a K. I didn't get a thumbs up. I got nothing, right? And so one day, like most families, we are experiencing a, a family conflict. And, and I, look, I, I am confessing to you. It's much easier to share with you than to pay for the counselor. So I'm sharing with you. Uh, I was festering that, right? Like, I never had a dad. And as your dad, I send you a, You don't even care. So I said to them in those moments, oh, yeah? Well, how about this? I text you guys a verse every single day, and you don't even respond. And the one who would miss chapel the most said, well, yeah, but that's because Dr. Smith sends us a verse, and we respond to his. I went, what? Because yeah, every day. There was an ear doctor uh, over in Pinellas County who went to church with us who had great influence, not only on our two oldest sons, but, but about seven or eight of their friends. And so he had them all in a group text, and every morning he would send them a verse. And guess what? They would thumbs up it. They would like it. They would respond to it. Why? They just needed another voice. And that's okay. Because every person would tell you, you need more than one coach. Right? It's okay to have that. Um, the, 